futuristic-looking train prototype was unveiled today at the Naval Air Station in Alameda. Makers say the computer-run rail car weighs about one-tenth of a BART train and can reach speeds of 150 miles an hour. If flying cars aren't the solution to congestion, maybe mass transit is. But that means persuading most of us to forsake the freedom and convenience of our automobiles in favor of public conveyances, which up until now offered all the creature comforts of cattle cars. Designers think they've come up with a concept of mass transit that will get even the most confirmed road hog out of his pig mobile. Instead of putting a lot of people in a few heavy vehicles, we put a lot of people in many small vehicles. And the capacity of each one of these vehicles is on the order of 10 to 20, as opposed to around 100 to 200 on a light rail transit vehicle. Now, it's not a train in the typical sense, but instead a lightweight vehicle that runs on rails. It consists of a series of small, autonomous, computer-controlled vehicles. Each of these is self-powered, self-controlled, and self-directing. But the unique thing about Cybertran, the designers tell us, is that it will operate more like an elevator than a train. The elevator analogy is a good one, in that you walk up, push a button, get in the vehicle, and it takes you to where you want to go, much like an elevator. It's actually even better than an elevator, since there can only be one elevator in a shaft. Here, this elevator vehicle gets off the main line, and all of the other vehicles slash elevators go on by at a higher speed. Cybertran is designed to run at speeds up to 150 miles per hour, and it's supposed to deliver passengers to their destination up to three times quicker than faster light rail or bullet trains. They say that's because, like an elevator, Cybertran cars don't stop at every station, just the ones the passengers are going to. We will have multiple vehicles in each station waiting for passengers. In fact, our storage system is that we store the vehicles in the stations rather than having a large dispatch yard somewhere outside the city where they're all stacked when they're not being used. CalStart, a consortium of advanced transportation companies and agencies, is testing the electric powered system at a one mile track here at the former Alameda Naval Air Station. This is in fact a very lightweight vehicle. It needs not nearly the foundation that the current systems use, so it's a much lower cost vehicle to install and to operate. The vehicle holds about 20 passengers, but no driver. It's controlled by a new computer system that can operate the cars on a regular schedule or, during a slack period, send them to a station when a passenger pushes a button. Well, this is a great support vehicle to current transit and current rail systems so that it effectively feeds those systems, but feeds them in a customized way. The system's so light, CalStart says it could easily be elevated. You could basically make a station out of a, out of a second story uh, floor of a second story building. But perhaps its greatest application would come in bedroom communities, where it needs a right of way no wider or higher than a car needs. Say the end of a BART line and extend it out, or from the sides of a BART line and feed uh, traffic into a BART line. John Deerian says he developed the system for three distinct uses, at low speed in downtown areas, or areas such as Yosemite to ferry passengers to, around, and from the park. It would operate at 20 miles an hour or less. At medium speed, 60 to 70 miles an hour, it would be used for commuters to feed BART, trains, buses, or ferries. A high-speed version would travel up to 150 miles an hour. Los Angeles to uh, San Francisco, Sacramento, Los Angeles to uh, Las Vegas, Sacramento to Reno, you know, those lines where you can really build up ahead of speed. The creators say the system could easily be installed on existing highway medians and is light enough to run on Bay Area bridges.